always fun to come home? Yeah, you know what, it, it really is. I spent, uh, you know, my entire career uh, as a player here in Vancouver, and that's not by choice. Nobody else wanted me. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, but I, you know, I coached here for seven and a half years, and uh, you know, in the times between jobs, I've always been here. My my kids um, were really fortunate. Um, my daughter was kindergarten to grade seven, okay. so her entire elementary school, and then she came back and uh, she did uh, the last three years of high school here. So. Um, they think Vancouver is home for them. My son, uh, uh, actually, the years that we went to Los Angeles, he didn't like it, and we allowed him to come back to graduate okay. uh, high school uh, here, and he lived with a family over on the North Shore. So we've always thought of Vancouver as, um, you know, our second home. We've got a place right across the water in North Van. We, we've, we've gone from having a house to now where the... the aging parents with a nice condo downtown that we say hey we don't want you to hang around kids get out of here <laughs> just like yeah. that we had some successful uh, teams here yeah. in Vancouver you had some pretty impressive records yeah you know when when we came here it, it was a team that needed a change and they brought in Brian Burke and and Dave Nonis and uh, you know I was brought in to obviously be a big change from uh, what the, they were doing it was the end of that Pat Quinn, great team, and they needed a rebuild, and we, we did a rebuild. Um, so I've been a part uh, of that. We got real good. Uh, matter of fact, when, when you look at 2002, 2003, 2004, we were one of the elite clubs in the, in the league, and uh, uh, we came real close the one year, the year that Minnesota beat us in the seven-game series. If we'd have won that, we would have played Anaheim, might have got to the finals. That was, that was probably our best opportunity to win. Um, you're looking at what was missing, you know, they got Luongo right after I got let go, uh, and that was probably the one element that was missing. You know, our, our team had become, the Sedims had become the premier line, and the, the West Coast Express, Brendan Morrison, oh, yeah. Naslin, and Bertuzzi were now the secondary line, but they were great. Like, uh, Bert Bertuzzi, Naslin, and... Uh, and uh, Morrison were a great line, one of the best lines in the league for a two or three year period. I mean, Naslin won the Lester Pearson Trophy once, finished second the second time, Burt finished second once. So uh, it was a great line playing out here on, on the West Coast. We had, uh, we had a very good D with uh, Jovanovski, Sammy Salo, uh, uh, Matthias Olin. You know, it's, it, was, it was a real deep, deep, uh, group and not that uh, you know the difference was you know when we were in Colorado we got Patrick Wan that took it us over the top they got to the top once they got the Wongo. You take pride yeah. as a coach uh, taking a look at what the Sedins have done and uh, potential Hall of Fame careers and yeah. you were sort of on the ground level. Yeah of. absolutely you know I, I had five years with them and uh, you know it, it was great to see them as, as kids just how good they were right away uh, but you could tell, uh, you know, we, we could always tell if they, they, they got knocked down, they weren't into the game. If they could handle the, the tough going, they were going to be very good that sure. night. So it was very noticeable when they were good and when they weren't good. And as they got older and as they got a little bit more mature, they got a lot more consistency in their game. And by the end, like I said, they were our number one group. Uh, and uh, obviously they continued on to be the number one group, and they still are uh, today. So it is wonderful. They've had a, a, a terrific, terrific career. Um, I, I always love, I, I smile when I think of them because I think they're just such great people. Uh, I always tell this story, you know, I, I, uh, in between periods once early in their career, I gave Henrik so much crap for missing a, a face-off assignment. I was up one side of him and down the other, and I called him everything but a white man, tell him he's got to do this if he wants to play in the NHL. Um, well, we were coming out, and Daniel, his brother, was waiting for me at the door as we were going to the third period. And uh, Daniel, he came to me and he says, I just want you to know it, that was me who made the mistake, not Henrik. <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> so, you know, there it was. It, Henrik let me yell at him, scream at him, and it didn't embarrass me at all. He took it, and, oh, God, I just I think, what respectful, great people they are. And they really care. I mean, very fond uh, of them, and uh, it's always nice to see them do well, but we don't want them to do well tomorrow. Just 
to get seven and a half years in one place too, Mark. I mean, yeah. these days that's kind of unheard. To be honest, it, it's unheard of. Yeah, no, it is. Like you look back and you just say, "Wow, how fortunate I was." It was the right time. You know, we got away. We were a terrible team when we got here. Um, we 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 became a good club. We were in it the last weekend of the game. As a matter of fact, I'm the only coach that's ever. Uh, been credited with a loss in overtime because we had to pull the goalie on the last weekend and they scored in the empty net so I'm the only coach that's ever been credited with a loss I have one loss that I that nobody else has a loss in overtime when you've pulled your goalie and gotten scored on so uh, you know that was that first full year and then the next year we made the playoffs and we made the playoffs for uh, the rest of the time here and then we didn't make it the last and I got uh, fired and that's what happens in pro sports when you go to Switzerland and you come back and you get to come back somewhere like here where you kind of put down some roots. Does this make you appreciate being back more too, Mark? Well, it's always nice to come uh, into Vancouver. I mean, it's such a picturesque place. Uh, it, it's always great to see a young guy, you know, watching Thomas Shabbat yesterday and, and Pumple, who'd never been here, and watch them come and they're, they're looking at the scenery and they don't realize how wonderful a country we have. Yeah. And when they see the West Coast and the Rockies and, and just how beautiful it is in Vancouver, it's always uh, neat to see. I'll tell you what, like, you know, I live over on the North Shore, so I go over that Lionsgate Bridge whenever I'm coming back and you never lose that feeling it's always the same and probably the same for you guys too you come over and you just go this is really a special place and so you know i felt really fortunate to be able to have worked here and it's nice to be able to afford a place here <laughs> i got in early that's good <laughs>